everyone, Dr. Dobson, and in this video we're going to be removing this impacted wisdom tooth. This is a patient that presented uh, with severe pain in the lower left jaw, and on the radiograph we can see that there's an impacted wisdom tooth with a large cavity that's pressing up against the second molar that also has a significant cavity in it. This is because there's an area between the teeth that cannot be cleaned with a toothbrush, and so this area is bound to collect food and plaque and cause decay. And that requires surgical correction in the form of removal of the wisdom tooth and restoration of the second molar. So we're going to get into the clinical footage here and begin by administering one cartridge of articaine into the mandibular nerve and then a quarter of a cartridge into the long buccal nerve. I'll typically give it a few minutes and then go back in and supplement with another cartridge or two. I'm going to endeavor to use a rubber dam for this restoration. Go in with a KS1 and begin removing the tooth decay. But we ended up shredding the rubber dam. It was uh, too, too gingival, the decay, and so we decided to proceed without rubber dam. This tooth actually tested vital to EPT and cold without lingering pain, so we actually uh, had a fairly favorable prognosis. And you can see that there's still some decay on the buccal surface. The explorer just dives right in, so we're going to continue removing the soft tooth decay with a small round carbide burr. And we're mostly satisfied here. Sometimes I'll forego uh, getting too deep to the pulp to prevent a pulp exposure. I'm going to use a Toffelmeyer to matrix the distal surface of the tooth here. Going to cinch it down and we're going to use Equia Forte in this case. I found that Equia Forte has a great seal and the tooth, the pulps generally re react favorably in a situation like this. So we're going to condition the tooth for uh, bonding here and I do a five second phosphoric acid etch. And then we're going to rinse thoroughly, dry it mostly, and then apply our Equia Forte. There's the final prep. This is a bonding protocol that I've uh, has worked very well for me, and I've seen uh, I've seen evidence in the literature that says that it's equivalent or better to a polyacrylic acid scrub. I'm going to give the Equia Forte about four minutes to set, and then remove our matrix band and then begin removing the excess restorative material with a large round diamond burr. And then we're gonna refine the reduction of the excess material with a large carbide burr on a slow speed. And I always love finishing Aquia Forte because it's so easy to see the margins. And there we're pretty much happy with the restoration and we're gonna check the bite to ensure that there's no contact on the filling, have the patient bite down and grind hard. And we're satisfied with that. We're going to apply the Equia Coat Varnish Agent and then light cure that with our Velo Grand. And then we're going to get going with the wisdom tooth. Uh, here's a panoramic showing the wisdom tooth with the huge cavity uh, responsible for the pain. and. Uh, millimeter or two of separation from the inferior alveolar nerve so we're not uh, we're not too concerned about probability of mandibular nerve damage in this case but we'll always advise the patient that it's a possibility and we're going to begin the uh, wisdom tooth extraction by laying a full thickness buckle flap make a small releasing incision into the distal buckle of the wisdom tooth and then we're going to begin reflecting our flap with a molt periosteal until we're on the bone. And once we're on the bone, we're going to swap out the molt for a Minnesota and begin troughing our buckle bone. Wisdom teeth are uh, they're encased in bone, which prevents their removal without uh, without removing the bone that traps it. So part of the procedure involves making a trough on the cheek side of the tooth where there's no 
vital structures or anatomy so that we can elevate the tooth out of the socket. And I'll extend the trough all the way to the distal buccal angle of the tooth. And I'll usually make it a little bit wider in the mesiobuccal because that's where the elevator is going to go in and I like to get it as deep as possible. So we'll make a little purchase point there for the elevator. And then sometimes I'll also make a little cut on the mesial of the tooth just to ensure separation between the wisdom tooth and the second molar to give it some space to be delivered. Gonna go in with our elevator and begin luxating, getting the tip down as deep as we can, a little bit of the enamel chips off there. But we'll continue elevating from the buckle and get good luxation right off the bat. And we're actually nearly able to deliver the tooth with just the elevator from the buckle. But we're gonna give a little bit of elevation from the lingual here carefully. And then deliver the tooth with a pair of cow horn forceps. Okay, for uh, pain management, I typically just use uh, Advil and Tylenol. I'll give 600 milligrams of Advil and 1,000 milligrams of Tylenol preoperatively. And then advise the patient to take that two to three times a day for the next couple of days. And then I'll, I'll suture, I'll suture half the cases of wisdom teeth, surgical wisdom teeth extractions. I don't think it's absolutely necessary every time, but we did in this case. So we're just going to use a 5-0 chromic gut, resorbable, and tell the patient that the suture is going to disintegrate in a couple of days. We'll do three throws and cut the suture and. Give a thorough irrigation with some sterile saline. And that's that's that procedure. So we'll put some gauze in and send the patient home. There's a wisdom tooth. You can see the big big cavity in it there.